Right, so now we're going to look at the main kind of use for simultaneous equations. And I'm not saying this is an everyday use for simultaneous equations, but this is where you might actually, actually want to try and use simultaneous equations. Okay, so simultaneous equations. I think I managed to squish this in. Context, almost. Right, so these are exam past paper questions that I'm just going to go through because this is the best uh, means to practice this. Okay. But the point of these questions is you're not necessarily going to get an equation to start with. Okay, You're going to have to build it up in part A and part B. And then in part C, you have to solve it to find what you're trying to find. But it won't say anywhere in the question that this is a simultaneous equations question. You've got to establish that for yourself. Okay, So it'll start something like this. Okay, I think this was from a couple of years ago. John bought seven bags of cement and three bags of gravel. The total weight of these bags was 215 kilograms. Right. <clears throat> Looking at that just as it is, Okay, you can't solve that. Um, you can't find out exactly how many ba um, or the weight of a bag of cement or the weight of a bag of gravel. Okay, all we can do is write down an equation to illustrate this information. Okay, and you have to pick the variable here. Okay, so the obvious one is to basically use the letters that we've got. We've got cement and we've got gravel. So let's use a C and let's use a G. Okay, let's make my Thing a little smaller. Right, there we go. All right, so we bought seven bags of cement. In other words, he bought seven C's and plus he bought three G's. Okay, and this came to a total of 215. So there's an equation. We know it's an equation because it's got an equal sign and it does illustrate this information. Seven bags of cement, simplest way of writing that is 7C. Three bags of gravel, simplest way of writing that is 3G, and that all equals 215 kilograms. We don't need the units, so it's going to confuse us a little bit, but we've just got to make sure that if we have to answer this question at the very, very end, that we include our units then, okay? Right, so given an equation, ordinarily, we could solve it. But the difference between this equation and ones that we can solve is this has two variables, and as long as it does have those two variables, we cannot solve it, okay? The only way we can solve it is if we have another equation using the same variables. And that's where part B comes in. Right, Shona bought five bags of cement and four bags of gravel. The total weight of her bags was 200 kilograms. Write down an equation to illustrate this information. So in exactly the same way, and we have to use the same letters now. Okay, so we've already um, selected C for cement and G for gravel. So we're gonna get five bags of cement, four bags of gravel, and that comes to a total of 200 kilograms, right? Once again, individually, because it has two variables, we cannot solve that equation, but we can combine the two to solve it simultaneously, okay? And this basically opens up part C, calculate the weight of one bag of cement and the weight of one bag of gravel, okay? But we can use any means that we've had or that we've looked at in terms of solving simultaneous equations, okay? We can solve it um, by substitution, Okay, although if we were to do it by substitution, we'd have to rearrange one of these equations to substitute into the other, and that might be quite difficult. We could solve it graphically, but no one really likes a graph. So the best option here is to solve this by elimination. <clears throat> okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take these two equations, 7c plus 3g equal to 215, 5c plus 4g equal to 200, and we are going to solve them simultaneously by elimination. Okay, so if you remember back to what we did in terms of elimination, the way that we eliminate is by making it so that we have the same amount of either of our variables, okay? So at the moment, we don't have that. Ideally, we'd have the same amount of Cs as we did, uh, or as we do in both equations, but we don't. Either that or the Gs, but neither that is the case, okay? So we want to make it so that that is the case, in which case we need to multiply. So we're looking at the two numbers. We're looking at with the fact that we've got seven Cs and five Cs, and we've got three Gs and four Gs. And I'm thinking, right, what's the lowest common multiple of seven and five? The lowest common multiple of seven and five is 35, but the lowest common multiple of three and four is 12, okay? So if I'm dealing with a smaller number, it's gonna make my life a lot easier going forward. So I'm gonna make them basically so that they are both 12 Gs. Okay, you can write it down if you want to, like I have done, or you can just bash on. But the point is, if I'm going to make this first one, if I'm going to make it so that it has 12 Gs, I need to clearly multiply that equation by 4. Same with the second one. If I'm going to make it so that that has 12 Gs, I'm going to have to multiply it by 3. Okay, so if I'm going to multiply, if I'm going to get 12 Gs, I have to multiply everything through by 4. So I'm going to take the 7C and I'm going to multiply it by 4, and that's going to give me 28C. 
and then I need to do exactly the same with the 215. Times that by four, that gives you 860, okay? So yes, that's a big number, but if we were to make it so that it was 35 Cs, so that the Cs matched up, then I'd have to multiply three by five, the second one by seven, and that's just not very nice, okay? This is the simpler of the two ways. But then I've got to do the same idea with the second one. I've got to make it so it's 12 Gs, and I do that by multiplying through by three. Everything gets multiplied by three. Fifth, five C, so already times by three is 15 C, and then a 200 times by three is 600, right? If you don't multiply everything by three, then it won't work, and you'll end up making your life really, really awkward. So take your time with this, and make sure you do it properly, okay? All right, so now I've got it in a situation that I can eliminate the Gs. Because remember, what I can do with these two equations is I can either add them or I can subtract them, okay? Right, if I add them together, I'm going to have 12 Gs plus another 12 Gs. That's going to give me 24 Gs. That is not eliminating the Gs, okay? Get rid of that. But if I take them away, 12 Gs minus 12 Gs gives me 0 Gs. That's what I want. I want an equation that only has one variable. So I'm going to take everything away. I'm going to do 28 Cs, take away 15 Cs, and that's going to give me 13 Cs. I'm going to double check, 12 Gs, take away my 12 Gs, that gives me nothing, so I don't write anything. 860 minus 600 gives me 260. So now I've got this equation, okay, 13C equal to 260, and that's a much easier to solve equation, because I can just divide by 13, and obviously we know our 13 table up to 260, that means that C is just 20, okay? In all seriousness, okay, 13 times by 2 is 26, so times by 20 is going to give me 260, okay? However you get to that point um, is up to you, but the answer there is C is 20. So that tells me, if I go back to my first instance, that tells me that one bag of cement weighs 20 kilograms. However, I've not answered the question. I've only answered part of it. I've got one bag of cement, but I need to find the weight of one bag of gravel, okay? So now I need to take this answer and I need to substitute it back into either one of my equations. It doesn't really matter which one and then solve it to find out what g is equal to, okay? So I'm going to pick the second one. The reason I'm going to pick the second one, okay, is because I've got five c's, and I can see ahead of myself that if I've got five c's when c is 20, I get a nice round 100, okay? So five of my c's, which is 100, plus the four g's that are left will equal 200, okay? That means, okay, uh, move that way. If I have four g's, I've taken away 100 from both sides, which means 4Gs will equal 100, in which case G will equal 100 divided by 4, which is 25, okay? Right, so you might think at this stage you have answered the question, but you have not, because remember what I said about the kilograms, okay? We've neglected that all the way through. All I've just said is C is 20. I created C. What the hell is C? Okay, so I need to answer this very, very clearly, in which case one bag of cement, okay? And I just write it out in full. One bag of cement was 20 kilograms, equals 20 kilograms, and the gravel, one bag of gravel, equals uh, 25 kilograms. I've answered it nice and clearly there, okay? I'm doing all the work, um, I've got my final answer with units, okay? Right, so this is one example of simultaneous equations in a context, and these are the kind of things that you're most likely to see in an exam situation. Again, it doesn't say anything about simultaneous equations in the question, you've got to establish that for yourself, okay? Right. So I've got a couple more here. Uh, I'm going to come back to this one because this is quite a niche one, but I want to show you it. <clears throat> so this one, not much going on here, but it says find the point of intersection of lines 3x plus 2y equals 33 and 4x minus y equals 22. Right, again, nothing about simultaneous equations here, but I need to basically find the one point that satisfies both of these equations. Because what situation I've got here is I've got two lines, okay? An equation of both of those lines, and they meet at one point. Ugh at one point. That one point will be the one value of x and the one value of y that satisfies, as I say, both of those equations, in which case I need to solve them simultaneously to find out what that x and y is. Right, so again, you've got the option. You could draw it out. You could actually full-on draw it out and work out for yourself, but no one likes drawing graphs. <clears throat> you could solve it um, by substitution, in which case you could rearrange one of them. And because this is only minus y, Okay, you can quite easily do that. However, most people will stick with the idea of elimination. Okay, and just write these both out. And try and combine the two of them so that we have either one of those uh, variables disappearing. Okay, <clears throat> and you can see this is actually quite straightforward. If we times the second one by two, then we'll have the same amount of y's. Okay, I could have done it with the x's, but I'd have to times the first one by four, 
the second one by three. Nothing wrong with doing that, it's just gonna take me longer. But if I just times the second one by two and make sure I times everything by two, then I match up with the first one in terms of the same amount of Ys, but I have to be careful. Because what I've got now, okay, is two different symbols and you must keep an eye on these symbols. Remember what I said about the symbols um, in the earlier examples that we did? <clears throat> same symbols subtract. Okay, so like we did with the first one here, because I had the same symbols, I could subtract them. But for this bit here, I have different symbols. So same symbols subtract, different means that you have to add. Okay, but just double check it. If you were to do minus 2y, okay, you don't have to write this out, but if you were to do minus 2y, and if you were to take away the plus 2y, that would not get rid of the 2y's. That would give you minus 4y. Much, as much as you might write 0y's, it's not true. Taken away does not work here. You have to add minus 2y plus positive 2y's gives us 0y's, and that's what we want. So everything else has to be added. 8x's and 3x's gives us 11x's. Minus 2y plus positive 2y's gives us no y's. That's what we want. And 45, 44 plus 33 equals 77. Hopefully we're good with our 11 times table. We can see that x must therefore equal 7. Now we know what x is. We can work out what y is. So I'm going to just take the first one. In which case, I've got three of my x's plus two of my y's equals 33. I now know that x is 7. So three of my x's will equal 21 plus the two y's that are left. I know equals 33. And now this is just an equation that I can solve because it's only got one variable. So take away 21 from both sides. 33 take away 21 is 12. And if 2y equals 12, <coughs> divide both sides by 2. 1y will equal 6. <coughs> Try. And again... We've got to make this uh, an answer to the question, point of intersection. If it's a point of intersection, it's a coordinate. And a coordinate is an x and then a y. So in this case, it's my seven and then my six. And that's my point of intersection, okay? These are generally four mark questions and the fourth mark comes from answering the question properly. If you don't write these parts, you will not get the final answer, okay? The final mark, sorry. Right, I just want to show you this last one just very, very quickly. I'm not going to do the whole thing because this video is getting very, very long, but I just want you to show you this first couple of questions because these are the ones that often confuse people. An Excelsior Stadium concert has room for X standing spectators and Y seated spectators, right? They're telling you the variables that they want you to use, okay? If the capacity is 12,000 tickets, make an equation in terms of X and Y, okay? Right, basically what this is saying is you're either standing or you're sitting, okay? Yes, there might be alternatives that you can think of, but go with the question. There are X amount of standing people. There are Y amount of stand, uh, seating people. And that makes a total of 12,000 tickets. Okay. So that is the total. That is one equation. It's a very basic equation. And if it's a basic equation, it means our second bit is going to be nice and easy. But that's what they're looking for. Okay. So just read the question carefully. There are only standing people or seated people. And the total of them, X plus Y, is 12,000. Okay. So for the second part there, gets a little bit more complicated. A standing ticket costs £28.50 and a seated ticket costs £41. Make an equation in terms of X and Y given the takings for a sold out concert. So all those 12,000 tickets are sold, okay? Um, were 472,500, okay? Right, basically what it means, if they sold all of the standing seats, okay, they sold X times by £28.50, okay? So they sold 28.5 Xs, okay? Right, they also sold all of the seated tickets, each of them costing £41, so they sold £41 times by Y, and that gave a total of 472,500, <clears throat> okay? So it's a much the same question as the first one, it's just the equations in the first instance are slightly different. They're easier, but it perhaps doesn't seem it from the question. Okay, and although these numbers are horrible, this is probably a calculator question. And as I say, because we've just got one X and one Y, okay, it's very easy to match up the coefficients so that we have, have either 41 Ys in both cases or 28.5 Xs in both cases, and then we can go from there. Okay, but I'll, I'll let you uh, work out the rest of that one um, and uh, I'll leave it there.